continue the service. If you will, uh, if you can open your Bibles to Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12. We're going to read together the scriptures and then we'll see what the Lord has for us today. Hebrews chapter 12. If you will, if you all stand up for the reading of the word of God, we're going to read verse 1 and 2. Uh, most of you guys are familiar with this passage already, and I'm hoping um, that um, it will be an encouragement to us today. So Hebrews, uh, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. This is the part I want us to hold on. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Father, we come before your throne today. We ask God as we share this time together, fellowship, communion with you, opening up this word, which is the bread of life. I just pray that you will feed us today. And God, I pray that you would disrupt the, the devil and God scatter him away from this place and away from our minds as we rest in your presence. Seal my mind and Father, I want to open myself to your thoughts and yours alone. So speak, Lord. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. So the text and the title of this message this morning is Kingdom Joy. Kingdom Joy. And I find that it's almost like I wish maybe if I would preached this sermon before the sermon last week. But God has a way of putting things together. So I'm going to trust in God's divine order. So Kingdom Joe is, um, I think it's a concept I want us to adopt here at his village. I want us to have an atmosphere, a culture, an environment of joy. Can I hear an amen? Because when you create an environment, you have a tendency to influence that with someone else. For example, um, as of now, the temperature, if you touch touch that little thing, it will indicate a certain temperature in this building. But it's not the same temperature outside. This building has a temperature that we set upon. We will set a temperature here based upon how we want it to feel inside. If I want the in in here to feel a little bit on a warmer side, I will crank the the thermostat a little higher so I can turn the heat up so that I can warm up the building and everyone will feel the heat in the building. Set. The atmosphere is set to a certain temperature. And I would love for us to start really adopting this kind of mindset that you are a child of God and you learn, we need to learn to set the atmosphere. So if I want joy in my life, I need to set the temperature to what? To joy. Can I hear an amen this morning? You all help me preach a little bit today. Because if you want a temperature in your home at 72, you will set it to 72 in order to create that at, um, the particular room to turn into 72. I don't know about you, in my home we have daytime temperature and nighttime temperature. Anybody has that in the house? So we have two. 
My wife will go around the house in, uh, uh, in the morning, in, in the winter time. So we normally keep our thermostat to about 69, 68, somewhere there. Some of you guys are like, oh my gosh, that's like a freezer. Okay, no, we're just fine. Um, so it kind of keeps around that um, sometimes 70 from time to time during the day. But at night, nobody knows that she, she, she's the last one coming up and she will go to that little thermostat and crank it down to like 65. You get up in the morning, literally you need socks and, and blankets and everything else just to survive. I'm not exaggerating. Sometimes I forget I'm coming down with short and, and no, no flip-flops. I'm freezing. So there's a certain temperature and we're creating a culture. So I, want, I am believing that God is calling us to be creating the environment of joy. Can I hear the man? Culture of joy, environment of joy. For those of you guys who are uh, in the scientific uh, space will understand culture. When you get a culture, it's a place where bacteria can grow a certain way, at a certain um, uh, speed. I know some of you guys who understand what I'm talking about. Culture, they're always shaking their head. My, my men are always picked on. I'm not going to pick on you today, but you're good. Um, so, you, yes, you culture, you, bacteria will grow faster in a certain culture. So when we create a culture of joy, then we'll see things going to start to develop. Joy will start to grow even faster, rapidly, because the culture is conducive for growth. Kingdom of joy, kingdom of peace, kingdom of love, which we're going to talk about next week, it will be the same thing. We've got to create the environment where we receiving what we are expecting, what we want to see. And that is decided by whom? By you. Amen? Joe is decided by you, not by God. God already predecided who he is. God is God Almighty. There's no other God by him, right? That's set and settled. Nobody can argue that unless you are an agnostic and what have you. That's fine. But nobody can really argue that God is God. Even Buddhists, some, there's a God somewhere. There's somebody greater than God is set. It's you and I who are trying to figure out who we are in this space as we live daily. D.L. Moody said this, the Lord gives his people perpetual joy when they walk in obedience to him. Perpetual joy comes when you walk in obedience to God. In order for you and I to have this kind of joy, it does not mean, by the way, it doesn't mean you have to forget what happened yesterday. It's not ignoring what's going on in your life, by the way. If you lost a child, you are sick, you find yourself in a, in a, with sickness, it doesn't mean you have to ignore the sickness. You have to know that, that that is your reality, even though my reality is this. But I'm going to set my eyes in the obedience toward God. Toward God. So I was having a lunch um, earlier this week with a gentleman. If I mention his name, all of you guys will know him. We're just having lunch and chatting and catching up. He was diagnosed with cancer a year ago. I believe the Lord has been working in him. I believe he's, he's, he really, really is, is kind of a, in touch with, with God. I don't know to what extent. But so I was just talking to him. I, mind you, I have my, my subject, my topic I was preaching on today, Kingdom of Joy, in mind. So and then I, we were sitting, he was sitting across the, the table from me, and I looked at him, and I asked him a question. I said, sir, you... You were diagnosed with cancer. You're going through chemo and all that. How are you maintaining? Because he's always bubbly. So how are you maintaining your joy? Without hesitation, he said, I just find that I'm very lucky to still be here. I'm grateful. So every day I get up, I choose to be grateful. And my gratitude is turning, my, is turning on my joy. It's almost like you opened the Bible and read it and be able to articulate that. Literally, that's out of the scriptures. Joy comes out of gratitude, gratitude. And sometimes in Bible, I'm not, there are days where I don't feel joyful. I don't, but it's because my eyes are turned away from Jesus. 
they're all consumed by the actual issue. God is not telling us to ignore what happened. And I'm not suggesting that this morning in order to have joy is to forget that you just lost something. No. I'm saying even though I know I've lost something, even though things are really, really, really terrible at this time, but I'm going to find some stuff in my life that I can be grateful for. And as I'm choosing those things, as I'm, I'm showing gratitude to God in these, then my gratitude is start to move me to a place where my heart is content. I am satisfied, Paul said. I am content, Paul said. So Christmas is a time where Family will come together. Almost every family have a tradition of what you're going to eat, what you're going to cook, how you're going to open your presents when you meet, and all that comes into play. And around that, um, we all have uh, a time where we want to get excited about uh, sharing presents, opening gifts, uh, loving on one another. And most of the time when you open your gifts, most of you guys are happy, and some of you guys are going to pretend to be happy. And that's all right. God knows your heart. And God knows the heart of the person who's giving you the gift. I know some of you guys, you pray for them. Oh, Lord, I don't know what they were thinking when they bought this gift. No, they were thinking about you when they bought the gift. Just say thank you because you got the gift. They thought about you. Happiness is a reaction to something that happened. Happiness. Something happened, I'm happy. You got a good grade, you're happy. You, get a, you got a car, you got happy. You bought a house, you got happy. You bought a new, a new dress, you, 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 you get happy. You, you look at yourself in the mirror, you get happy. Whatever that makes you happy, happiness is always, if not 110%, if there is such thing, a result of something that happened. You are happy about that. We get excited about that. And some of us, we equating joy with happiness. We kind of put them together. We're joining them as parallel because uh, in some of us, we're thinking, if I'm not happy, then I'm not joyful. Maybe, maybe today, I hope you find a connection or maybe an understanding that there is a disconnect between joy and happiness, but sometimes joy can be exuberant, can be exciting. But sometimes joy can be nowhere to be seen by uh, anybody on the outside, but it's buried on the inside of the man or woman. And the person who exemplified this well or illustrate well for us, uh, there's a lot of characters in the Bible that we can pick from, but one is Job. Job was still able to maintain the joy on the inside, but not the excitement on the outside. I'm losing my kids. My business is going down. My health is going down. What's going on? My friends are getting against me, but, but I'm going to pause. I'm still going to recognize God. I'm not going to ignore the fact that my God is still God. Wow. After losing your kids? After losing your business, after having everybody against you, your friends deserting you, how many of us will still survive that kind of train? Many of us would be, oh, God, after one child, no, two, three, no, God, no. Some of us cannot even stand if one friend does not call you back. We feel like the world is falling apart. Everybody hates me just because John doesn't call. Come on, now John is busy. Jack is in Walmart. But Job maintained because biblical joy has nothing to do, for the most part, with an outside a celebration and excitement. Biblical joy is rooted in your faith. You believe God. Job 26, 7 said, he spread out the northern skies over the empty space. He suspends the earth. Whoa, in 
going to hang the earth. Who can do that? Only God. So Job was still having a perspective of a God being so grand, so good, even though my life right now is terrible. My God is still good. I'm still going to honor him. I'm still going to celebrate him. Happiness is a pleasure that comes, but joy comes out of sacrifice, a decision you make. So when you look at our text, therefore, Jesus encouraging us that we are in this race, let us run this race with endurance. Don't give up, don't quit. Don't give in, stay focused, hold them tight, because for the joy that was set before him, Jesus endured what? The cross. There was a conversation that took place that you and I may not be purview to, connected to, we're not aware of. God set this thing in motion. I will send my son unto us. The son is what? Come on. God was sending over 400 years ago, set something in motion. Prophecies came out. Uh, there will be a kid who's going to be born. And this particular kid uh, will be the one who is going to die on the cross. Uh, that means Jesus knew about the pain and suffering he's going to go through. Come on now. He knew that he's going to go through a struggle. So for the joy that was set before him, he knew there would be a, a, a celebration. By the way, kingdom joy is for all of us to look forward to ultimately. Can I hear amen this morning? Ultimately. Ultimately, no matter what, if you are in Christ, you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you will have kingdom joy that will have wholeness, wellness, celebration, laughter, no pain, no suffering, no diseases. All the flus and cold are no longer going to be in existence in the kingdom joy once we are with God. I'm looking forward to that. For the joy that is set before he was willing to endure the cross. So I can go through people hating on me, accusing me, beating me up, spitting on me, nailing me on a cross. Oh, I can go through all that because of why? The joy that is set before me. So ladies and gentlemen, most of us, we panic. We, we, we become depressed. We, we, our anxiety goes from 1 to 20 to 200% because we lose sight of what? The joy that's set before us. We lose sight of the tomorrow with Jesus. So if we can learn to keep our eyes on him and learn that Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith, Oh, so God is so good. Uh, he was talking to Nehemiah. If you, uh, you can flip your Bible there or you can jot it down. I'm only going to grab one passage here, Nehemiah chapter 8. That's the song we sang as well. But if I read Nehemiah chapter 8, you're welcome to turn there, verse 9. I'm going to start there. I'm going to start by verse 12. Nehemiah chapter 8, 9 through 12. Then Nehemiah, who was the governor, and Ezra, the priest and scribe, and scribe, and the Levites who taught the people, said to all the people, this day is holy to Yahweh our God. Do not mourn or weep, for all the people were weeping, they were crying, and they were mourning, and when they heard the word of the law being preached, then he said to them, go eat of the fat, drink of the sweet, and send portion to him who has nothing prepared. For this day is holy to our Lord. Do not be grieved for the joy of Yahweh, Kara, for the joy of Yahweh is what? Your strength. God 
encourage Nehemiah and say, share this with everyone because on this day we're not going to grieve. On this day we're not going to mourn. We're not going to cry because we are going to go and have a party. We are going to dance. They are going to dance when? When they heard the word of God. So let, let me say this. Let me ask maybe the same question I asked at the beginning of the service. Is coming to church on Sunday, in fact, it is kind of a rhetorical, you don't have to answer it, but is coming to church on Sunday a time where you come to sit under someone who's giving you suggestions or somebody who's giving you options to pick from, a buffet, or is coming to hear God's word for you to take and apply? For many of us, we come, we will hear the scriptures being preached and spoken to us, over us, but we will receive that and go home and say, oh, that was a good message, but I'm going to do this instead. That was good, but I'm still not there yet. We give ourselves excuses and passes. We're allowing ourselves to not apply the word of God. And then, and then we still to say, why is this not working in my life? Am I applying the scriptures? These people, they got excited when the Bible, when the Torah was open to them. Ladies and gentlemen, how many of us get excited just to read the Bible? We get so excited. I see a couple of hands. How many of us just jump to bed because this is life? Bread of life. Make a New Year's resolution. I give you one. Those of you guys who would like to put one together. Love the Bible. Just love the Bible. Try that. Just try to be, to fall in love with the Bible. Just when you open it, try to see, can you read the Bible, man, and just let this kind of speak to you, and you speak to it, and let it speak to you, and then have a dialogue and say, oh my gosh, I love you so much, God. That was their reaction. And then the, 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 the priest, the Nehemiah, the prophet, they now they encourage now the, the joy of the Lord is what? Your strength. When you rejoice in the Lord. So how do we get to that point? I'm glad you asked. It is in the presence of the Lord where we find the fullness of joy. In the presence of God. Psalm 16 verse 11. Just write, write the reference down. You make known to me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. Whenever you have a hard time finding joy. Maybe let us not mistake in you having God on the inside. And having the manifested presence of God. I have the Holy Spirit on the inside. I'm saved, born again, and sanctified. God is with me. But the manifestation of God comes when I'm intimate with him, in my dialogue with him, then there is a manifestation. God show up. God show up. Where two or three come together, God is present. Not because uh, he wasn't present before. He, he manifests himself uh, when people are in agreement. Can I hear a man? In agreement with him. In the presence of God is fullness of joy. I would rather be in the presence of the almighty God than anywhere else. We need to develop this desire to want to be in the presence of God than anywhere else. There are some folks when, when things get difficult or hard, they revert back to what they used to do before. Someone once said, a man without a vision is a man without a future, and a man without a future will always return to his past. Every time we don't have a goal for the future, the tendency, if it doesn't work out here, you're going to go back and do what you did yesterday. So 
So this morning, no matter what's going on in your life, you're not the first one to, to be going through difficult times. I received a text message earlier today because I was having a conversation with one of our leaders and a text message was literally in, in line with my message. He said, because I was, we, were, we, were, we were chatting on, about um, this particular topic and it was like, my devotion on Friday was about what we were talking about the other day. And I said, this is exactly what God, how good God is. God likes to confirm things. And then in a, in a devotion, it was James chapter 1, verse 2. I was like, that's exactly one of the paths I was just meditating upon for the sermon. He said, count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials. When you meet trials of various kinds. Count, count it all joy. So when I'm faced with the difficulty, I need to count it joy? Yes. When I lost a job, I need to count it joy? Yes. When my wife and I just said, yes, yes, count it joy. So whatever's going on in your life, yes, count it all joy. When you go through various trials and tribulations, when you go through various struggles, Count it all joy. And Paul to the Philippians, Philippians chapter 4, Paul said, rejoice in the Lord. And then he said, again, I said, rejoice. What is Paul telling them? Where was he when he wrote that? He was incarcerated. He wasn't having the most peachy life. He was in a villa somewhere watching what have you know. He had no Netflix, by the way. Can you survive with no Netflix? Some of you guys, you're like, no, I don't want to die. I need my, my desk. He was locked up, possibly in chain, I don't know. But it was in the most favorable situations where he was in. But yet he was sending a letter to the Philippians church and say, count it all joy, my brothers. Rejoice, my brothers. Let the joy of the Lord be your strength. No matter what you're going through, rejoice. Again, I said rejoice. So there was no stipulations to maybe you only find joy in certain things. There was no let pick and choose what we need to rejoice upon. We need to just rejoice in the Lord. So this morning, as I said earlier, I need, I, I, I'm choosing joy. I am choosing joy. I've decided that I am going to make up my mind. I am going to choose joy even when I don't feel like it on the outside. But I'm going to choose joy. You know, it's, it's very fascinating, the human body, because uh, more and more I'm trying to kind of uh, learn about the functionality of our bodies and so on and so on. But the little bit I've, I've, I've discovered recently, when you go outside, the temperature is hot. Those of you guys who are medically inclined, what does your body will do, want to do on, from the inside? It will regulate the body to want to reduce because the heat on the outside, there's a nurse over here, there's a heat outside, the body inside say, let's try to bring cold so we don't overheat. The body will try to counter the outside heat. And now, if you go in the cold shower or a cold plunge, automatically the body will turn around in the blood cell, release uh, some kind of um, protein to help heat up the body from the inside so you don't die. We are built on the inside. If my situation on the outside are not good, my inside can still turn on to gratitude and I can still survive. That means if naturally my body can just counter the cold by just the way God created it, are you telling me that God is not able to help you with your outside variables be so chaotic? Are you telling me God cannot give you peace in the midst of the chaos? God is able to do a 
exceedingly, abundantly above all. The God we serve is not just giving us some kind of a warm and fuzzy type of Christianity and all a way to follow. When he says rejoice, then you just choose to rejoice. But he gave us some pointers in how we can really rejoice. Find this joy on the inside. Anchor our teeth into this thing. The things that I have spoken to you, that my joy, my joy be in you, and that your joy may be full. Let's flip our page to John chapter 15. This will take only a a few minutes, and then we're going to wrap up. John chapter 15, if you will. I'm getting more and more excited every time I open the scriptures. I don't know if you can tell, I get, I get so fed up reading the word of God. I'm seeing God jumping off the pages in my life. I'm going to pause here to say this to you guys before. Just open John chapter 15 and I'm going to give some of you guys time to get it. Verse 7 through 13. Just have it and pause for a second. I'm going to tell you, I wasn't planning on saying this. I was wrestling on the way to say it, but I'm going to say it today. I'm going to say this. I want you guys to look at me for a second. You guys saw my wife struggling last weekend up here. Anybody was here in the service? Raise your hand for a second. Okay. Struggling up here. So, I'll give you a quick insight. I'm not going to go in detail, but just give you a little insight. The situation has nothing to, to be joyful about. There was absolutely nothing in that situation that we should be like, hey, Awesome. Nothing. When God comes and said to you, at least I believe strongly that God said this, uh, that you need to do this. And then you stare in front, you realize it's very impossible and almost crazy, God, what you're asking me to do. The tears that she had, had were both Fear and joy at the same time in those tears. Fear because the unknown is really unknown and bleak. But the known is God spoke to her and said, dream big. That's the known. So God gave her a word with nothing that we can see that's already in motion. It's not like when God gave her a word and, she, and gave her a million dollars. I wish that God did that. Like God, what happened? You dream big with what? Have you ever asked God that question? Oh, man, dream big with what, God? With water? I've got plenty of water, town water in town. I can just open the faucet. Maybe it's going to come out. But the reality is this. The Lord lay in our hearts, as much as it may be a struggle, I just just felt like 2024, we are going to go full-time in ministry. And 2024, we have so many big plans of things we want to accomplish. And 2024 is, we have a kid going to college. 2024, we have another child who is going to be in high school. And a year later, we're going to have to figure out how he can get a car. Because if you don't know that, it's a painful process. So if you think about all that, so 2024, it's not joyful. I'm not very excited about the fact that God said go full-time with no money, go full-time with no plan. God does not work that way, amen? No. No. So when she received that plan, she received that word, she looked at me crying, and I was like, God, you like to confirm things, because I was praying for a confirmation myself. So God, I want to make sure I'm hearing this right. There's nothing joyful about the situation. There's nothing joyful about this season where we are walking away from things and not knowing what's going to happen tomorrow. So as I'm preaching this with excitement, because I am joyful in the God whom I'm abiding in. Can I hear a man? In the God I'm abiding in. 
I would rather die with obedience to God and trying to save my soul and lose my soul totally. So ladies and gentlemen, now let's go to John 15. Let me just almost a few minutes we're going to be done over here. I want to, I want to help somebody today. You, you, maybe there's somebody here who is struggling to try to find joy in your situation. Just having a hard time. Let me, let me maybe help you this morning. I want you to read with me. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish, it will be done for you. By this my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit and so prove to be disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. If you, if you keep my commands, you will abide in my love. Just as I have kept my Father's commands and abide in his love. These things I've spoken to you that what? My joy may be in you and that your joy may be full. Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready? You, I am ready for God to fill up my cup with joy. I am ready for God to keep filling and filling. This is my command that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friend. Now, key word, remain, abide. If you look at that word abide for some of your translation to say remain. So I want to give you a little bit of the word abide is used 10 times in the first 10 verses. First 10 verses of chapter 15, that word is thrown like this, abide, abide, abide. Looking at the Greek roots of the word, we discover this. Abide means to dwell. To remain, to be present, to be held, to be kept, to abide. So I want you to think about this. I'm going to walk us through. If you abide, okay? If you abide in me. I want you to substitute that word with uh, these words I will give you. If you dwell in me, if you remain in me, if you are present in me, if, you are, if you've been held by me and kept by me, if you remain in me. So when you look at this text uh, and you look at this word abide uh, and it has such depth to it, uh, the word of the Lord said this to you and I this morning. If you remain abide, being kept, dwell in me and my words abide, being kept, dwell in you. Wow. Then things are going to happen. What's going to happen if I abide? And the word of God abides. So what, what's going to happen? God will answer your prayers. Just like that. God will be glorified. Because when God answers your prayers, it's not for you to celebrate. It's for whom? For him to be glorified. Most of us, we pray, God answer, and then we jump over here like we were the, the, the ones who caused it to happen. No, we need to turn around and give glory to whom, whom, whom glory is due. And not only God will be glorified, and, and you will bear much fruit until I'm in a season where I say, God, I want to produce more, more, more fruit for your kingdom. More fruit for your kingdom. And then you will prove to be my disciples, and not only that, uh, I'm going to love you the same way I, uh, my father loved me. Wow. Just by abiding, by remaining in him and letting the word of God just remain in you and abide in you. How do I abide in the Lord? He gave us the answer in the same text. If you just obey what? My command. Wow. 
So in order for me to abide, I must do what? I must obey his commands. And then he laid out his commands as well. What was the command? You must love the Lord your God, the Shema. And then you must love your neighbors as yourself. That's the greatest command that Jesus was able to hold together. How many of us can obey 613 Mosaic laws? None of us can do that. So Jesus came and wrapped up all these things in the Shema and said, love the Lord your God and then love your neighbor as yourself. Wrap it up for us. Obey my command, you will abide in me. So ladies and gentlemen, this morning, as I'm closing, I want us to kind of pay attention to this for a second. If you want the joy of the Lord to be your strength, if you want to walk in the joy of the Lord, because Jesus said this, if you do all these things, then my joy, my joy, not me, Jesus said my joy will be in you. So he will take who he is, huh? And put it on the inside of you. The joy that we are looking for is Christ himself. In order for you to truly have joy is to have Jesus Christ on the inside of us. Living and breathing on the inside of us. Because if I abide in him and I'm I'm into the word of God, I am into his presence. Then his joy will be on the inside of me. When Jesus gives me his joy, then my cup will be overflowed with joy. Let us not get deceived by the winds of doctrines. And people say, but we'll give you ten ways to find joy. Okay, go read those books. How about seven, seven ways to happiness? Go read that. Maybe when you are depressed, go watch, well, go watch the movie The Pursuit of Happiness. Maybe you can find happiness in that. Well, I've watched that movie. Ah, I did. I've watched that movie The Pursuit of Happiness. It was fun to watch. If you are pursuing happiness, you were never going to be happy in the end. Because it's always, you're always going to be looking for something to give you the excitement to be happy. And sometimes life just runs out of things to, to get you busy, to keep you excited. Because sometimes life will just be like, hey, pause, maybe let me make you depressed today. Anybody's ever had that? Life sometimes will just pause. And you just have to live to, to deal with whatever the struggle Oh, God, if I want to be happy, that means I I cannot have back pain. I cannot have knee pain. I cannot have no sickness in my body. If I want to be happy, I should be breathing well, walking well. If I want to buy something, I just buy it. If I just want to go somewhere, I just go. Is anybody can just do that? Even if you can buy whatever you want, sometimes your back is all gone. You're sick in your body, so you, you, you spend all your good money to want to keep yourself alive, so you're not even enjoying the money that you have. So it's not the things that we have that can give us the, 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 the fix that we're looking for. The fix that we're looking for is from the inside out, is to have Jesus on the inside, the author and the finisher of our faith. Ladies and gentlemen, during this Christmas season, can I, can I just help you? Enjoy the celebration. Just don't be mad at everybody else. I know you're not going to love everybody else. Just enjoy the Jesus that you have on the inside. That's the difference. Absolutely, that's the difference. So how are we navigating through this season of our lives? We are choosing joy. And how am I going to be content during the season with unknown? I am choosing to abide in whom? In him. I'm choosing to abide in what? In his words. That is my commitment because I know outside of his perimeter, there's absolutely nowhere we can survive 2024. Absolutely nowhere. 
So I said to my wife the day, the day before that particular message, I said to her, hey, darling, I was frustrated. I said, hey, darling, God brought me here with nothing. He's not going to let me die. I said that to her, just like that. I was mad because I did not understand it. It was frustrating. And then because I like to work the plan. And then I start forgetting that who do you think you are? You thought you, thought you got yourself to hear? Shut your mouth. Remember what I taught you. I brought you here with nothing. And I promised you I would never leave you nor forsake you. And you think I'll let you down one more time? Went to bed. I just got still and I went to bed. And the next morning, God gave her that word. Next morning, God gave her that word. So I am resting in this word here. In this word here. I'm not sitting here telling you, Mr. Just, can you play the pad, please? I'm not sitting here telling you just what I think. I'm opening the scripture to show you where you can find joy for yourself. It's in the Bible. So yes, it doesn't mean you have to forget, ignore the reality. My friend who has got cancer, his reality, he has cancer. And he could die tomorrow, he could die the next day. In fact, he asked me, he said, he's already, already planned his funeral. He already asked me to speak at his funeral. So would you, would you, would you be the one to speak at my funeral? I said, yes, sir, I will do that. And he said he's choosing every day to just have a good life. Why be grumpy? Why be sad? If I get up in the morning, it's a good day, I go out and play golf. If I can, if I cannot play golf because it's too cold, I'll go out there and walk. I'm doing something. I'm enjoying life. I'm, I'm not going to let this take my joy. How many of us have let the circumstances steal from you? I'm not going to go. I just feel too bad. I don't feel like doing it. I'm just... I'm just why are you letting the devil win? Why are you letting the devil win? The way we're going to win against the devil is by showing him that he's not going to take your joy. I'm telling you that. His village, hear me. If you want, if you want to win, if this church is going to win, and how we're going to win is we're going to have a culture of joy. I want this church to be a church that's so full of joy, peace, uh, and gladness. Uh, now, when people come in, uh, they just em get embraced uh, by the joy of the Lord, uh, and they have no other option. But it's too hot in here. i got to take my jacket off and adjust to the temperature. They just have to do it. Who's going to do it? You and me. When we come to church, we're all gloomy and grumpy, and we hate even walking up, this waking up in the morning. How much do you think God is excited about you being awake? God will say, you're not helping me. You're not helping advance my kingdom. So we got to get up and get excited. Come on, come on now. Who's going to tell somebody who's really, really depressed about the Lord Jesus Christ? If you know the Bible, you're not sharing it. Can I hear an amen this morning? So we have one week to even push this hard. The notion of uh, hope. Peace, joy, and love is what we're celebrating during this month. We have one more week. Oh, we gave you the card. They were so beautiful cards. We even gave you a little cheat sheet. You don't need to talk much. Just say, the joy of the Lord. Give them a card. Get excited, glad, happiness. Because... The devil has been defe was defeated at the cross when Jesus said, for the joy that was set before he was enduring the cross because Jesus knew even in his flesh it was hard, but he knew in his spirit that he's going to be resurrected on the third day and everything else will be just awesome. So we're going to sing this song at the end. Uh, brother, um, the laces, if you guys are going to pray for us, if you can come on this side, we're changing the side for you guys. Those intercessors are going to come over here. If you want to pray with someone, they are going to be on this side. And I want to encourage everyone today just to choose joy. Can you all stand, please?
if you will, let's all stand. And I want to ask if you could repeat this after me while you're stretching your legs. Um, I couldn't believe last week, I think I, I, I spoke for an hour. I was like, Lord, help me. Um, um, so can we just raise our hand and say, I choose joy this morning. One more time and say, I choose joy this morning. So as we're singing, I want, this is not a suggestion. This is your commitment to God. You are choosing joy. You are choosing him. Let God just take over your heart and completely, completely saturate your soul with joy, his joy. Because when that joy comes in, your joy will be made full. Then you can be able to share with people like, like Paul said, rejoice even though I'm locked up. Rejoice. Like my friends got cancer, they say, I still rejoice. I still find joy. Because without gratitude, there's no way to be joyful. Paul knew that it was Jesus Christ who saved him. He was rejoicing in his salvation in the grace that was extended to him. He wasn't rejoicing in material things. So this morning as we play in the song, I want to ask you this question. Is Jesus the Lord of your life? Can you truly say I'm rejoicing because I could see my sins over here. They're so bad. But he came and took it away. I rejoice because of what he did on the cross for me. So we are rejoicing not because we have or don't have. We are rejoicing because on what Jesus did, he died on a cross for you and I. He saved us from our wickedness and sins. And he, bring, he brought us into his marvelous light. I'm rejoicing because of the grace that was extended to me. The mercy that was placed upon me. And out of that, God, I can then rejoice in whatever else because my joy is filled in my salvation because you saved me, Lord. For the next few minutes, make that transition. Because if you want joy, you need to have the giver of joy as the Lord of your life.